You know, the more I look around, the more I come to the conclusion that we are masters of self-delusion, you and I. You know, people have all this stuff going wrong in their lives, and what we want to do is we want to blame everyone else rather than taking responsibility for ourselves. Hi, I'm Bernie Diamond. Welcome again to Christianity Works and a Happy New Year to you. As we kick off this brand new year, it's a special time, isn't it? It's a time when we look forward to new beginnings. It's a time when we want to leave the past behind. Maybe last year wasn't all that you wanted it to be, so it's time to move on and hopefully this year will be a lot better. The problem though is that if we keep doing the same things over and over again, if we keep making the same mistakes, over and over again, what happens is we end up getting largely the same result. Whether we like it or not, we live in a world of cause and effect. If I eat too much of the wrong foods, I'm going to put on weight, and at my age, I put myself at risk of heart attack and stroke and a whole bunch of other things. Now, I wish that wasn't true. I wish I, wish I could eat all the cake I wanted and, and all the sweets I wanted. And I, I wish that wasn't true, but it is true. We live in a world of cause and effect. Many years ago, when I was a young man, I used to smoke very heavily, three packets a day. And you know, 35 years later, I had a chest x-ray and the doctor commented on the scars that were still on my lungs as a result of the smoking. Whether we like it or not, we live in a world of cause and effect. So. What I want to talk about this week and over the next few weeks is breaking that cycle, it is, is taking responsibility for our own actions because we do like to delude ourselves. I would like to think that I can sneak in a piece of cake now and then and not put on weight, but you know what? It's just not true. I, I try to delude myself, but it's just not true. I wonder what it is in your life that's holding you back. I wonder what sin in your life is robbing you of all that God has for you. So in this series called Extravagant Grace, we're going to go right back to basics, right back to the beginning, right back, if you like, to mother's milk rather than solid food. Interesting, uh, the Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Corinth. We pick it up in his verse letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 beginning of verse 1. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not with solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you still are not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? It's a good question, isn't it? We sometimes over-spiritualize our lives. We over-spiritualize our walk with Jesus. We expect the songs that we sing on Sunday and the sermons that we listen to to make us all better. But if we continue on with exactly the same behavior, if we continue on, for example, as, as Paul talks here, with quarreling and arguing and, and carrying on, that is going to rob us of the life that God has for us. What sin, let me ask you again, in your life, is robbing you of all that Jesus came to give you. In this day and age, the notion of sin is not a popular concept. Sin sounds like some old religious, judgmental, yucky word that no one wants to use anymore. But sin, as it turns out, is the central dilemma, the central problem of the human condition. In fact, God took it so seriously that he sent Jesus, his son, to die so that we could be forgiven, to die and rise again so that we could have a new life. And we listen to sermons about that stuff, and then we go out on Monday and we start doing the same thing over and over again. My friend, it's time for you and me to take responsibility for our actions. It's time for you and me to call a spade 
a spade. Sin is sin. Whether it's a popular concept or not, whether it's a concept that you're comfortable with or not, you and I both know there's right and there's wrong. And if we continue doing the wrong thing, and often we do that because it's just an entrenched pattern of behaviour. Some people are addicted to getting angry. Some people are addicted to arguing. Some people just naturally fall into sexual immorality. We, we all have our Achilles heel. And as long as we continue in that, life isn't going to get any better. Here we are at the beginning of a new year. And with all my heart, I believe that God wants a better year for you. Now, we can't control the things that may befall us. We can't control the circumstances and the people that might come against us. But what we can do is set about cleaning up our own act, about dealing with that one sin that continually robs us of all the good that God has for us. And that's what we're going to set about doing in this series called Extravagant Grace. And you may gather by the title of the series that it's not all about working harder. It's not all about becoming a better person or a better Christian. Because you know what I found? The harder I work at my particular Achilles heel, and mine happens to be perfectionism and anger, the harder I worked at that in the past, the more I failed. What we need to do is to rely on the extravagant grace of God. I love that word, the extravagant grace of God. And indeed, that's the reason that Jesus came. The first time he stood up when he began his public ministry, he read from the book of Isaiah. We can see it now in Luke chapter 4. Let, let's take a look. Jesus tells us the very reason that he came for us. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. You see, maybe this is the year of the Lord's favour for you. Maybe Jesus brought us together today to bring healing to the brokenhearted, to sight to the blind, release to the captives, freedom, all the stuff that he came to bring. Jesus came to set you and me free from ourselves, free from the stupid things we do, free from the wrong things we do, free from the things that we do habitually, compulsively, that rob us of the abundant life that he wants us to have. Listen to me, the good news of Jesus Christ is the power to transform your life. It's what Paul writes in his letter to the Romans, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith, as it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, is the power to transform your life. It's the power to save you from the consequences of sin and death. Interesting, when I produce radio and television programs about difficult relationships, about money, about all those sorts of things, people love those. They flock to those. They get a lot of response on our, our website. Funny how we like to go to things that talk about the symptoms without going to the root of the problem, the heart of the problem, which is the sin in our lives. So, so let's take a moment to take responsibility, to confront the reality of our sin. It's like being an alcoholic. The first step to recovering is admitting that you're an alcoholic. The first step to overcoming the sin in your life is admitting to yourself that you are indeed a sinner. Let's pick it up now in Romans chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. Please, if you have a Bible, grab it and join me in God's word because God's word is the power to save. Amen? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of those who by their wickedness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. Ever since creation of the world, his eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood and seen through the things he's made. So, they are without excuse. For though they knew God, they did not honour him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking 
and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling a mortal human being or birds or four-footed animals or reptiles. Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to degrading of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. In other words, what Paul's saying here to the Romans is there ain't no excuse, people. Look around. Look at the stars in heaven. Look at the amazing creation. Look at the amazing person that you are and we all are. Look at the animals. Look at the the 360,000 species of beetles that God created, for goodness sake. When we look at what God created, it's obvious that there's a creator. It's obvious that there's a God. And as Paul says here, they are without excuse. Can I make that more personal? You and I, we are without excuse. We can continue making excuses this year for our bad behavior. We can continue making excuses this year for the sin in our lives, whatever it is in your life. Oh, just keep on going, keep on making excuses. The problem with that is nothing's ever going to get better. What we're going to talk about in this series is actually living in the extravagant grace of God, actually laying hold of the extravagant grace of God, experiencing the grace of God, letting the grace of God make a powerful difference in our lives. And friend, we cannot do that until we own up. We can't do that until we hear Paul and say, we are without excuse. Stop making excuses. Whatever sin is ravaging your life, destroying your relationships, robbing you of of experiencing God's grace, whatever that is, my prayer is that in your heart of hearts today, right now, you'll acknowledge it, name it, own it, and say, God, I need your help with this. Because listen to me, God wants you to live in his extravagant grace. Come on, how about it? The extravagant grace of God. Life very definitely has its ups and downs, not to mention the fact that even when things are going well, our own foibles and failures have this amazing ability to rob us of the good things that God has planned. That's why living your best life, the life God always had planned for you, takes power. I mean, serious power. And that's why I'd love to send you a free copy of my latest life application booklet, Holy Spirit Power. And with the life application questions at the end of each chapter, you'll be able to chew things over to apply God's Word right into the realities of your life. God's Word is alive and active. Amen. So I'm praying that He'll help you lay hold of the incredible power that He has ready and waiting for you, the power to be all that He made you to be through this booklet. You can request your free copy at ChristianityWorks.com. You'll see that offer right there towards the top of the homepage. Click on it, pop in your name and email, and that e-booklet will be on its way to your inbox in just seconds. Again, that web address is ChristianityWorks.com. All right, let's get back into God's Word now. And as I said before the break, it's time for you and me to stop making excuses. It's time for us to stop rationalizing away our bad behavior. Interesting, you know, how quick we are to point out other people's weaknesses. How quick we are to get annoyed with the, the wrong things that other people do. And yet, what we want to do with our own sin, with our own bad behavior, is is sweep it under the carpet. The problem with that is it never goes away. It keeps on coming back. It keeps on robbing us of our lives. In Romans chapter 1, beginning verse 29, Paul actually lists some of these sins, some of these bad behaviors. And, And it's quite a list. Let's go and take a look. They were filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, craftiness. They're gossip, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, rebellious towards their parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. They know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, 
yet they not only do them, but even applaud others who do them too. Now, as I said, that's, that's quite a list. And sometimes we think, well, you know, cheating on your wife or cheating on your husband, that's really bad, and of course it is. But all these other so-called minor sins, you know, arguing, being proud, coveting what someone else has, ah, oh, that, that's fine, God understands, that's what I'm like. Well, let me grab your attention today. That's not true. There is no such thing as a small sin in the eyes of God. Those things that were listed there, they ruin our lives and they will have consequences because one day, one day you and I will stand in judgment before God. Come on, are you this year going to continue to sweep your bad behavior, your sin, your rebellion under the carpet? Or do you want to grab a hold of it today and bring it before God and say, God, it's time for us to do something about this and I can't. I don't have the power. I don't have the strength. I've been doing this all my life and I just can't get over it. Because you see, that's the beginning point of actually seeing the power of God and the grace of God unleashed in our lives to set us free. Jesus came to bring relief to the captives, release freedom, to bind up the brokenhearted. He came for you. Today is the day to bring that sin before him. Today is the day to name it. Today is the day to admit it to yourself and be honest to yourself and take responsibility for it. Because the moment you take that step, you begin on a road of redemption, on a road of having God's grace poured out over your life. That's the good news. The bad news is that if we don't do that, the consequences will destroy us. Let me take you back to Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of those who by their wickedness suppress the truth. See, sweeping this under the carpet is about suppressing the truth. And, and one day the wrath of God will fall on those who don't fess up to their sin, who don't believe in God. It's about self-delusion. Verse 22, claiming to be wise, they became fools because they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling a mortal human being or birds or four-footed animals or reptiles. Now look, I'm sure most of us aren't into idol worship and into having physical idols sitting on our desktops or in our homes. But we do exchange the truth about God for the idols that we create in our life, for success, for wealth, for money, for, for recognition, for... Whatever it is, we do. The whole point of today's message is to bring each one of us to this place where we're honest with ourselves, where we stop exchanging the truth for a lie, where we come before God and say, God, I've heard this joke on television and he's right. This one sin in my life, maybe it's being angry with your children. Maybe it's not treating your wife well or your husband well. Maybe it's trying to claw your way up that totem pole at work to crawl over the top of all the other people to be recognized, to rob them of their glory and their praise, to claim their work as your work. There are so many things that we can be doing that rob us of the truth. God's word is really clear. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. You can't live your life on this earth to the full, continuing to sin. And one day, that death will become eternal. Let's pick it up now in Romans chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Therefore you have no excuse, whoever you are, when you judge others. For in passing judgment on others, you condemn yourself, because you, the judge, are doing the very same things. You say, we know that God's judgment on those who do such things is in accordance with the truth. Do you imagine, whoever you are, that when you judge those who do such things, and yet you do them yourself, you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience? Don't you realize that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? It's <laughs> exactly what I was saying before. We want to judge everyone else. We want to blame everyone else. We want to say that person's doing wrong and that person's doing wrong. And yet for some reason we never look in the mirror 
and take responsibility for our own actions. I love what it says there towards the end of that in verse 4. Do you despise the riches of God, the extravagant grace of God towards you in Jesus Christ? Don't you realize that God's kindness towards you is meant to lead to repentance? Now that word repentance, again, it's an interesting word. It's like that word sin. We don't like the word sin. Oh, that's old-fashioned. No one talks like that anymore. Well, God does. And we need to. And repentance, the word literally means to turn away or to turn around. It means to have a change of heart that leads to a change of action. It means to say, I ain't going to live like this anymore, God. I come to you and I repent. I come to you and I ask you to help me to turn my life around, to turn away from these things that I know are wrong. And back to you. God's kindness is meant to cause repentance. God's kindness to us is meant to bring change to our lives. But funny how we want to hang on to the baggage. Funny how we want to hang on to our bad behavior. It's crunch time today. God is speaking to you and to me today through his word. Don't you realize that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? Verse 5, But by your hard and impenitent hearts, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. For he will repay according to each one's deeds. To those who by patiently doing good seek for glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. While for those who are self-seeking and who obey not the truth, but wickedness, there will be wrath and fury. There will be anguish and distress for everyone who does evil, the Jew first and also the Greek, but glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good, the Jew first and also the Greek. For God shows no partiality. That's the truth. That's the crunch point that we've come to. I don't know when my life on this earth is going to end. I try and stay healthy. I try and eat right. I exercise. I do all the right things. But hey, I could walk out of this television studio and be hit by a taxi as I get into my car. I could have a heart attack tomorrow and die. And, and, and once it's over, it's over. It's too late. We will stand before God. We will be judged, you and I. Has God's kindness towards you brought you to this point of, of turning, to this point of repentance, of turning your life back to God. Now, I don't care whether you go to church and you have been for the last 50 years or whether you don't. I don't care whether you prayed the sinner's prayer 30 years ago or whether you've never given your life to Jesus. That, see, that's not what this is about. This is about getting real. Are you living a life that says, that declares to everybody else, including to God, that you want to honor God first? Or are you continuing on in sin? Maybe going to church, maybe singing the songs, and then on Monday going back to work and ripping people's heads off. Well, how are you living your life? My friend, I pray that God's word has penetrated your heart today. Now, I guess it feels like a bit of a gloomy message, but as we continue on this series, what we're going to see is that when we take responsibility like this, the extravagant grace of God starts happening in our lives. Let's pray together. Father, I pray for each person watching today. Lord, you know the sin that we have in our lives. Father God, we've heard your word today. We've heard of the terrible judgment that will come one day to those who don't live their lives for you. So we bring our sin before you today. Here it is, Lord. You know it and I know it. We lay it at the foot of the cross. We admit it before you, Father. We take responsibility. We're sorry, Lord God. Please take the sin away. I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't, I don't want to make the same mistakes anymore. Lord, please take this sin away by your power, by your love, by your grace. Lord, and pour your extravagant grace out on our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. My friend, if you prayed that prayer with me right now, 
Know this, that God has heard your prayer. Know this, his extravagant grace is about to start happening in your life. And yes, it will mean change. And yes, there will be struggles. But now that we've admitted our sin before God, now that we've brought it to him, now that we've asked him to have a powerful impact, just watch what God's going to do. And we're going to continue this series again next week on the program. Join me again. If you can't, catch it up on the internet on our website. Because I believe the extravagant grace is going to make a powerful difference in your life this year. Just before we go, I'd like to remind you that I would absolutely love to send you a free copy of Christianity Works latest life application booklet, Holy Spirit Power. Because with all the ups and downs we go through in life, we need power. I mean, serious power, God's power, resurrection power, Holy Spirit power. To request your free copy of this booklet, visit ChristianityWorks.com and you'll see that free offer right there towards the top of the homepage. Click on the offer, pop in your name and email, and that e-booklet will be on its way to your inbox in just seconds. Again, that web address is ChristianityWorks.com. I'm Bernie Diamond, and I'll catch you again same time next week with another message of God's love, God's grace, and God's power for each one of us in Jesus Christ. Hey YouTube, if you are blessed through today's message, then click on this button and subscribe to the Christianity Works YouTube channel and continue being blessed and empowered through the Word of God each and every day.